Good morning. And welcome to our worship service here at First Lutheran in St. James. To those here, to those joining us by live stream, we're all glad to gather together to hear God's word. And today, a blessing to us as we also celebrate the uh, sacrament of holy baptism. And uh, please, that uh, parents have brought their child uh, for this great gift of God. Welcome to those who are visiting with us. It's always a pleasure to have visitors in our midst. To highlight a couple of announcements, uh, we are a week out from Christmas, and uh, we'll be celebrating our Christmas services uh, next Sunday evening, uh, 5 and 10.30, and then Christmas Day at 9 a.m. That information is in your bulletin. always want to encourage you uh, to... Uh, keep attentive to those who maybe don't have a church home but would like to celebrate Christmas somewhere, and maybe you could invite them to join us in that uh, celebration. Uh, Pastor Joy, uh, so you've heard this uh, phrase, out of, out of an abundance of caution. Uh, so that's kind of the announcement today. Out of an abundance of caution, Pastor Joy has decided not to come here. She's had some symptoms She's testing negative, but just in case, uh, she decided, uh, we decided uh, it would be best for her to uh, just rest uh, this morning. Uh, she is the preacher for today, so uh, she has handed over her sermon to me, and I will be uh, preaching uh, what she has prepared. Today is the last chance for getting Lefsa purchased, uh, if you'd like to do that. That will be after the service here. And a reminder about the Good Gifts Advent Tree that uh, we want to support as we're able. I'm going to leave the rest of the announcements to your reading. Uh, I do want to announce a couple of things about our prayer list. Uh, Steve Otto has been added. He had triple bypass surgery uh, a couple days ago. Um, his mom, Dot, Otto uh, uh, is therefore in transition because Steve was her caretaker, and so they're trying to find a new place for her to reside. So let's remember them in our prayers. And then Laverne Hammer has been on our prayer list. She died uh, yesterday. And so the service to give honor to uh, her life and faith will be this week sometime. Uh, you could watch our Facebook page or the Sturm uh, Funeral Home uh, page for the details when they are decided. Laverne Hammer. Any other announcements that you'd like to lift up? Then let us enter into our worship service by our confession, uh, page 94 in the Red Hymnals. And please stand as you are able. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. God of all mercy and consolation, come to the help of your people, turning us from our sin to live for you alone. Give us the power of your Holy Spirit that we may confess our sin, receive your forgiveness, and grow into the fullness of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Most merciful God, we confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us, forgive us, renew us, and lead us so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. 
In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us, and for his sake, God forgives us all our sins. As a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ, and by his authority, I therefore declare unto you the entire forgiveness of all your sins, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us sing our Advent hymn number 248. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. Stir up the wills of your faithful people, Lord God, and open our ears to the words of your prophets, that anointed by your Spirit we may testify to your light. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated. We like to take a time in this service to light our Advent wreath, and uh, each candle represents a great gift of our Lord, and so we have lit candles for hope and peace, and today we light a candle for joy. So on your insert of readings, uh, there's a song that we've been singing. Let us uh, sing that together. Jesus, Jesus. 
Jesus brings joy. The first reading today is from the book of Isaiah, chapter 61. The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me, because the Lord has anointed me. He has sent me to bring good news to the oppressed, to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives, and release to the prisoners, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor and the day of vengeance of our God, to comfort all who mourn, to provide for those who mourn in Zion, to give them a garland instead of ashes, the oil of gladness instead of mourning, the mantle of praise instead of a faint spirit. They will be called oaks of righteousness, the planting of the Lord, to display his glory. They shall build up the ancient ruins. They shall raise up the former devastations. They shall repair the ruined cities, the devastations of many generations. For I, the Lord, love justice. I hate robbery and wrongdoing. I will faithfully give them their recompense, and I will make an everlasting covenant with them. Their descendants shall be known among the nations, and their offspring among the peoples. All who see them shall acknowledge that they are a people whom the Lord has blessed. I will greatly rejoice in the Lord. My whole being shall exalt in my God, for he has clothed me with the garments of salvation. He has covered me with the robe of righteousness. As a bridegroom decks himself with a garland, and as a bride adorns herself with her jewels. For as the earth brings forth its shoots, and as a garden causes what is sown in it to spring up, so the Lord God will cause righteousness and praise to spring up before all the nations. 
The word of the Lord. Please read responsibly Psalm 126. When the Lord restored the fortunes of Zion, then we were like those who dream. Then they said among the nations, The Lord has done great things for them. Restore our fortunes, O Lord, like the water courses in the Negev. Those who go out weeping, carrying the seed, will come again with joy, shouldering their sheaves. Please stand for the Advent verse. The Holy Gospel for this day from the Gospel of John, the first chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came, to, he came as a witness to testify to the light so that all might believe through him. He himself was not the light, but he came to testify to the light. This is the testimony given by John when the Jews sent priests and Levites from Jerusalem to ask him, Who are you? He confessed, and he did not deny it, but confessed, I am not the Messiah. And they asked him, What then? Are you Elijah? And he said, I am not. Are you the prophet? He answered, No. Then they said to him, Who are you? Let us have an answer for those who sent us. What do you say about yourself? He said, I am a voice of one crying out in the wilderness, make straight the way of the Lord, as the prophet Isaiah said. Now they had been sent from the Pharisees. They asked him, why then are you baptizing if you are neither the Messiah nor Elijah nor the prophet? And John answered them, I baptize with water. Among you stands one whom you do not know, the one who is coming after me. I am not worthy to untie the thong of his sandal. This took place in Bethany, across the Jordan, where John was baptizing. The Gospel of our Lord. Stay with us this Advent time as we wait for you. Light a candle in the dark, shine our way to you. Shine our way to you. Dear friends in Christ, grace and peace to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Maybe it's the gray, gloomy skies of this time of year, or the shortened daylight, because we have moved the hands of the clocks back an hour in early November. Maybe it's the stress at work, or the end-of-year deadlines that we face. Maybe it's the stress of finding and affording the perfect Christmas gift for all our family and friends. Or maybe you or someone you love is struggling with an illness, or you're facing uh, the grief of losing a loved one. Or maybe it's divorce. Whatever the case, 
These days and weeks before Christmas, where the songs of the seasons tell us that we, it's the most wonderful time of the year, can also be days and weeks that for many people are tinged with sadness or grief, depression, regret, or loneliness. And during this season of Advent, if we're honest about it, we'll admit that we've experienced times like that in our life and all of those kinds of feelings. What we often need to hear then is a word of comfort, a word of joy that will strengthen and sustain us in hard times. And that, dear people of God, is the traditional message of this, the third Sunday of Advent. It's been known as Gaudete Sunday. It's a Latin word, Gaudete. And it is the Latin word for rejoice. So in the midst of this season, this blue season, this dark season, we have this Rejoice Sunday. And the candles of the Advent wreath, not so much ours, ours are all white, but often they're blue candles, and you could get a, a, can, a set where there's three blue and a pink. You go, why is there a pink candle? It's for this, God a Sunday, Rejoice Sunday, uh, a sign of brightness amidst uh, the dark season. We have sung the Advent song, We Are Waiting for Jesus. Jesus brings joy. And you have may, maybe heard that there is a difference for us between joy and happiness. We understand joy to be a much deeper uh, gift than the fleeting feelings of happiness. And because they are different, we can experience them differently at different times. We can even say, and this might sound odd on the surface, but you can say, I feel joyful, I'm just not very happy today. The enduring joy that we ask Jesus to give can exist even in the ups and downs of our daily life. That sense of joy comes to us as well today as we hear our scripture readings and specifically the prophet Isaiah in our first reading. But before we get to that reading, here's some of the context of why those words were spoken. God's people had been through a world of hurt, of brokenness, of grief. This was 800 years before Jesus was born and they had blown it with God time and again. Despite repeated warnings from Isaiah that the judgment of God might come upon them, they turned away and chased after false gods. And they were, in doing so, willing to settle for less than the promises of God. Their waywardness had caught up with them. And the consequence, the punishment for this sin, was that the land and the people of Judah were given up to the great power of that day, Babylon. They were conquered. And the capital city, Jerusalem, was destroyed. And in that city, their great temple, the great edifice that stood there as a witness to their faith in God, destroyed. Then, it was a Babylonian policy, when they destroyed a country, they would take uh, the powerful and the rich out of that country and bring them to Babylon, where they could keep a close eye on them. And so, many people were taken into exile and forced to live in Babylon, and what, was left were the exile, uh, what were left were the poor and the weak and the elderly there to live in Judah, unable to rebuild anything. But this destruction and exile would not be the end of God's people. 
in the very midst of this terrible time, Isaiah begins to speak a word of hope and a reason for joy. There's a beautiful passage in chapter 35 where Isaiah declares that God would work to restore the land. It goes this way. The wilderness and the dry land shall be glad. The desert shall rejoice and bloom. Like the, like the crocus, it shall blossom abundantly and rejoice with joy and singing. Waters shall break forth in the wilderness and streams in the desert. Not only was this God's word telling of new life for the land, this transformed, um, this transformed way through the wilderness was also a sign of God's new impending age when God's people would be restored and made new. For God was on the way and would strengthen the weakened and the, fe and the fearful. God would open the eyes of the blind and give hearing to the deaf. God would make uh, the lame leap like a deer and would cause the tongues of the speechless to sing for joy. And so that brings us to, to today's reading in Isaiah 61. It continues that same narrative that God has a plan to build up the devastation uh, that had been brought upon the cities and upon the exiles. They would return home. Appropriate for this third Sunday of Advent, a reading to mark this day with joy and rejoicing. The deep running joy was rooted in the deeply held assurance that though there were struggles and disappointments, one day they would be resolved by a servant sent by God. And so here again, this portion of today's reading. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because the Lord has anointed me. He has sent me to bring good news to the oppressed, to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to to the captives and release to the prisoners, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor and the day of vengeance of our God, to comfort all who mourn, to give them a garland instead of ashes and oil of gladness instead of mourning. These are amazing prophetic words. Out, uh, though the land uh, was desolate and though the hearts felt parched and empty, God's promise was to bring about a new creation and a new life. What an awesome message for people who long to be comforted, for people who long to know what joy felt like again. Isaiah had the pleasure and the privilege of passing on this message to God's people and to declare to them a God's word for joy. So what was true for God's people long ago is also true for you. God's people now. God is our wellspring of joy in this Advent season, in the seasons of darkness in our life, in times of hardship, whatever we may be facing, because God long ago sent in flesh and blood Jesus to do for us what we could never do. In Jesus, God came to transform us, to make us his new creation, to free us and bring us back into a place where God rules. And in doing so, we are shown a new way of living in this world. For in Jesus, God came to lead us out of darkness into his marvelous light. And in Jesus, God came to open heaven's door for us, to give us an eternal life with him. It does not stop, however, with just us being on the receiving end. As God did for the prophet Isaiah long ago, so too God put his message of salvation into our hearts and on our lips to share the good news with one another and the world. It is for sure a message of joy that we share with others. It is a message of God's unfailing love for God's people and all of creation. So may that love and the joy of knowing what God has done and will do be our song today and every day. Amen. Let us sing number 239, 239, Hark the Glad Sound.
we turn to this time of baptism, and I invite up Seth and Summer and Maeve, their new child, and along with the sponsors, um, Bo and uh, Shania. Shania, thank you. God, who is rich in mercy and love, gives us a new birth through holy baptism. The power of sin is put to death in these waters, and we are raised with Jesus Christ to new life. We are united with all the baptized in the one body of Christ, anointed with the gift of the Holy Spirit, and sent out in mission for the life of the world. Whom do you bring to receive this life-giving gift of life-changing gift of God? We present Maeveland Urshaw for baptism. As Maeve's family and sponsors, will you raise and nurture her in the Christian faith? We will hope God. Will you faithfully bring her to worship and teach her the Lord's Prayer, the Creed, and the Ten Commandments? We will with God's help. Will you place in her hands the Holy Bible? Read it with her and provide for her instruction in the Christian faith. We will, with God's help. Will you be an example by the way you live that Maeve may grow in the faith and continue in the promises of her baptism? We will, with God's help. Do you, people of God, do you promise to also support Maeve and pray for her in her new life in Christ? We will, with God's help. Then with the whole church, let us confess our, confess our faith do you believe in God the Father? Do you believe in Jesus Christ, the Son of God? Do you believe in God, the Holy Spirit? I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Okay. Maeve Len, I baptize you in the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, in the name of the Holy Spirit. Amen. As may his family of faith, we proclaim, you belong to Jesus in whom you have been baptized. Thanks be to God. Let's move up to the altar here. And let us pray. If we could put Maeve here, we can... Let us pray. We give you thanks, O God, that through water and the Holy Spirit, you give your daughters and sons a new birth and wash them from sin and raise them to eternal life. Sustain Maeve with the gift of your Holy Spirit, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and fear of the Lord, the spirit of joy in your presence, both now and forever. Amen. Maeve, Len, her child, you have been, child of God, you have been sealed by the Holy Spirit and marked with the cross of Christ forever. On behalf of our family of faith, I present this candle to you. Please keep it in a place where you and Maeve can see it. On the anniversary of this date, please light the candle, celebrate, and give thanks for the gift of baptism. Walk with the light of the world, live in the light of God's word. Let your light so shine before others that they may see your good works and glorify Jesus Christ. Amen. Through baptism, 
Maeve has been received into the household of God. She is entrusted with the good news of Jesus Christ and is strengthened to serve by the Holy and life-giving Spirit. We welcome you into the body of Christ and the mission we share. Join us as we give praise to God and bear God's creative and redeeming word to all the world. Amen. She woke up? Yeah. <laughs> I present to you our new member, Maeve Len. This little light of mine With hope and expectation, we offer our prayers for the church, the world, and all who await God's day of restoration. Each petition ends with merciful God. Please respond, receive our prayer. God of joy, fill our hearts with joy and sustain us, with heart, sustain us through hardship as you work your grace in our lives. Give your church a spirit of gladness as we gather together and also as we are sent forth. Merciful God, receive our prayer. God of creation, guide us as your stewards to protect forests, orchards, rainforests, all areas of nature. Keep us working to reduce pollution and help us to end extinction of plants and animals. Merciful God. You, Lord, love justice, and for those who face injustice, we ask for your work. Show your mercy to those who are oppressed and brokenhearted. Give renewal of perspective and safety to those who are incarcerated. Grant wisdom and compassion to those who work for public safety and all who work within prisons, jails, and courts. Merciful God, receive our prayer. God of salvation, continue to turn us to you in praise and thanksgiving. Keep us praying for our world and guide us to do good deeds for all those who are in need. We give thanks for your work in our lives through baptism. We remember Bryson Peterson's baptism a year ago. May we all celebrate the new life that you give. Merciful God, receive our prayer. God of care, we lift up those who look to you in time of healing and in time of need. Today we name Kathy Boleyn, Linda Berman, Rhonda Davidson, Jean Deegan, Vern Finisted, Tom Haler, Marion Harms, Ken Henderson, Monica Humbles, Marilyn Hunstead, Don Jacoby, Jared Keel, Laura Keeker, Phyllis Lehman, Amber Lenz, Sonia Lubke, Cindy Malone, Hannah Ulrich, Bill Moore, Chris Nordvi, Ruth Olson, Dot Otto, Steve Otto, Dan Panzer, Mark Richardson, Diane Sandberg, Dolores Schultz, Bev Tate, Bailey Trickle, Ariel Wright, Eldon Wright, John Young, Don Zollers. 
We give thanks for your work also in the life of Jennifer Kinneman, who leaves our prayer list. We ask that you continue to bless her. Merciful God. God of the resurrection, we, with gratitude, we rejoice in all the saints who trusted in you in their lives. May we be such witnesses also to others. We pray with thanksgiving for the life and faith of Laverne Hammer as we entrust her to you. We know that you have given us gifts that death cannot destroy, so teach us always to hold fast to what is good. Merciful God, receive the prayer. Listen to these and all our prayers, O Lord of hosts, and restore us with your great mercy. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. We have a second anthem to enjoy.
Offerings are given in many ways uh, these days, uh, electronically, uh, mail, dropped off, and also in our offering plates. Uh, we don't pass the plates here. Uh, we do collect the offering at the door. If you missed it coming in and you wish to support our ministry, you could do so on your way out. But at this time, uh, please stand as our offering plates are presented. Let us pray. O God, our provider, by your merciful hand, abundance, spring, abundance springs up from the earth. Receive and bless these gifts of your own bounty. Let them be a sign of your steadfast love and faithfulness for all people. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. May Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit bless you now and forever. Amen. We sing our closing song, number 263. Go in peace and serve the Lord.